Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we'll just wait for a few more seconds for everyone to, to be situated. Um, also, um, if you have any questions throughout today's uh, presentation, uh, feel free, I encourage you to put them in the Q&A. And throughout the presentation, I'll be more than happy to, to answer them on your behalf. Uh, this is a good opportunity for you to network um, amongst uh, all of our peers in terms of uh, what type of business, what type of industry do you have? Have you already started a business plan? Don't have a business plan? Um, also, um, you know, it's a good opportunity for you to get to know each other and it will be engaging, interactive uh, for today's uh, webinar. Thank you for attending. Yes, um, the presentation and it is going to be emailed to all participants, and also it is being recorded. And by all means, I strongly encourage you to like and subscribe our YouTube channel because that is where we will be uploading the presentation um, at the end of uh, today's um, webinar. All right, so we're going to we're going to go ahead and get started. So once again, my name is Jesus Padilla. I am the manager of administrative services here at the Florida SBDC at FIU. I'll be doing today's presentation on how to create your business plan. In doing so, uh, we are part of this exciting program, which is the Miami-Dade Business Navigator, which is funded through a cooperative agreement through the U.S. Small Business Administration. It was established in part of the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, that uses the community navigator approach to help you, the small business owners. The program is comprised as a lead hub. In this case, it is the Florida SBDC at FIU as a center of network of spoke organizations that employ um, community, uh, community, uh, community advocates um, to work with the small businesses in the recovery and the resiliency. The overall focus is placed on businesses owned by veterans, women, as well as socially and economically disadvantaged individuals. Including with the Florida SBDC at FIU, we have Ascendis, Branches, the EDC of South Miami-Dade, Miami-Dade Chamber of Commerce, Los Peda, and Startup FI Procurement, as all seven organizations are able to assist you at no cost to assist you with your business needs, if it's access to capital, marketing, government contracting, business planning, um, operations and strategic management. Uh, we have all of our team members from the seven organizations to assist you at no cost. So overall goal is to work with businesses that are here physically in Miami County. If your business is located outside the jurisdiction, don't worry, you're not gonna be leaving empty handed. Shoot me an email and I'll be able to assist you with the next steps with your local um, SBDC um, or um, small business organizations to provide you additional resources and information. And at the end, it is to create that local community navigator approach in consulting, mentoring, and trainings as such you're in today. Along, I strongly encourage you to follow us on our social media channels. Uh, along with liking, subscribing our YouTube channel, as that is where all the webinars are being uploaded. And definitely, it's a nice library for you to have as a resource to fully co start connecting the dots uh, to help you with your business um, growth needs. Also, having those tools for your toolbox um, to taking your business from one phase to the next and enhancing the conversation with our business navigators. So um, just by you know, conversation, um, has any of you created a business plan? Do I already have a business plan? What stage of your business plan is um, you, you all have today? Okay. 
perfect. Okay, nothing, all the information, perfect. We need a business plan, mentoring. Okay, yeah. So, so definitely, yes. This is going to be the A to Z of a business plan. And we're going to be creating those walls for your business. Um, what you need, what type of questions you need to answer, um, along with additional tools for you to enhance the conversation and present it to any potential business partners, bankers, even have that as a roadmap for your business vision. So the overall um, objectives for today is defining a business plan, explain the different components of a business plan, along being able to apply those principles, those best practices when writing a business plan. So it's overwhelming. And, you know, where to start, just like anything in life, you know, how to ride a bicycle. You have to start with the training wheels until if you're really good, you have a unicycle. But, and it's just like how it is in the business plan, don't know how to start, just connect, start connecting the dots, having a nice clear outline it helps to develop and mold um, what you would like to do. And this is where I, I work with a lot of clients. This is where they lose track when it comes to drafting a business plan from turning their idea into a business plan and don't delay your opportunity to move forward. Focus on you could get your idea out of your head into a paper to get the ball rolling. Start planting those seeds. So the overall blueprint for success of a business plan is creating that outline to the framework of your business, declaring your vision, and showcasing the necessary steps to fulfill that vision you have outlined. Use this as a roadmap to navigate your business towards that strategic direction that you would like. It could be, I would like in three years to generate over a million dollars in sales or I would like to have a corner of the market in the county or in the city. Whatever you would like to have um, those goals, the, the business plan is that blueprint for that roadmap. So to put into perspective, the business plan explains the who's, the what's, the how's, the when's, the why's. So it's an easy question of a self-analysis of yourself. Who are you? Why are you in business? What you do? How do you do it? Where you operate? How will you generate profits? Who are your customers? And why is your business important? Is it solving a, a, a key issue in the community? Or where you operate, it could be a strategic point of the city or the county or the industry that you're in. So, by answering these questions, you're able to start enhancing the conversation. So by doing so, by enhancing the conversation, this is where you're able to communicate to those specific audience that you want to tailor this business plan to. It could be the internal stakeholders or the external stakeholders. To go more in depth of the internal stakeholders, it is your employees, your management team. To fully understand your financials, along your target market, your mission, your vision, your customers, by focusing on those details, operations, as such, your operating budget, your market research, competitor analysis, the sales list, and product design. If you don't have, if you don't know where to start or how to fully conduct a market research, don't worry. We have consultants under the Miami Day Business Navigator Program that can guide you and assist you through all of these areas as well. So don't worry, don't be overwhelmed, we're family. So anything that we could do to be of assistance to enhance that business plan, we're here to guide you through the entire process. Now, for the externals, it is what's the end, use, the end goal. Oftentimes it's getting potential investors, bankers, business partners looking for a loan, but what type of loans do you need? For what intent? What's the amount that you're looking for? How would the funds will be using? What those funds will accomplish? How do you plan to repay? Any collateral that you have to offer? What's interesting is that on the 12th of April, we're actually having a, a workshop, a webinar of 
you know, a bankable business webinar. So I will definitely, at the end of today, I will be able to email you the link so you could definitely carry on the conversation um, in terms of the end goal, creating a business plan to obtain the funds. So right there, we're tying in everything together. Yeah, because a perfect example, I'm looking for a million dollars so I could start selling these Sharpies. So what, you know, how do I plan to repay it? It could be based on the pricing structure. It could be any collateral that I could put up front. It could be my house or it could be my some assets that I have on the side. So anything I could do to enhance and entice the external stakeholders to lend me the money, um, that right there, it's definitely um, informative in the business plan. So by creating your plan and project your business from three to five years ahead and outline the route you intend to reach based on yearly milestones, it could be revenue projections or it could be other milestones that you would like. Just like an example we talked about, I want to generate a million dollars in these years or obtain X amount of clients. So by having these projections, it's giving you that roadmap. At the same time, just think of it as your business plan is a living document because your business will change and your business plan should be updated to reflect those changes. Imagine 2019, everyone had their business plan. This is what I'm going to be envisioning my business from three to five years. In 2020, look what happened. Some businesses, you know, they had to pivot. They had to reroute what they intend to do. So by updating those changes, you're able to identify new markets, enhance your, en enhance your market share, but at the same time, understand those key elements to make those decision-making processes on a regular basis throughout the entire time. So here are some questions that could definitely help you to start um, creating the roadmap. It's considering these questions. What service or product does your business provide and what need does it fulfill? Who are your potential customers for your product and services and why they'll purchase from you? Along, how will you reach your potential customers? Is it through social media? Is it through web um, um, mailers? Is it through signages, how will they? How will you be able to reach out to your potential customers? Where will you get the financial resources to start or grow your business? It could be from potential investors. It could be from a rich uncle, whomever. But by having these clear cut questions could definitely um, start laying the, the foundation. By having your company description, Talk about the mission and vision, what are your company goals, the objectives that you want to accomplish, who are your target markets. It could be your primary, secondary markets, the general overview of your product or service, the industry that you're in, and the future of the industry as well. Who is in the, um, the company management, the organizational structures, along with any legal structures that, that you have. So the overall mission statement is an action-based statement that declares the purpose of an organization and how they serve their customers. So let's use Nike, for example. What is Nike's mission statement? Well, their mission statement is it brings inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world. But athlete has, a, has, a, has an asterisk. And, and in the asterisk is, if you have a body, you're an athlete. So that is Nike's mission statement. It's how they're serving their customers. Now, the vision is the declaration of the mid midterm and long-term goals, stating what you want to become in the future. So I use the Florida SBDC network as an example. The vision is creating a better Florida for all by helping businesses grow. That is the vision statement of the Florida SBDC network. Now let's look at Southwest Airlines. Their vision is to be the world's most loved, most efficient, 
and most profitable airline. So we have consultants that can help you to fully have a clear cut, concise mission and vision statements. That is the start of your branding and marketing strategies of your business. So the overall business goals and your objectives is be specific and be attainable. If your business is in operations, describe those major accomplishments and successes. It could be it could be pretty much that if you're in the government sector, the government contracting sector, that you know you have obtained X amount contracts with the Department of Defense, or you have become a vendor or doing business with the Miami-Dade Public Schools. So anything along those goals, so you could definitely showcase. Yes, uh, I'll be e e emailing the presentation. So anything that you could definitely present yourself and make your business attracted, attractive, by all means, strongly encourage you to highlight those goals and, object and objectives. Along with the products and services, it's a brief and enticing overview of your product and services to include the description that you're offering, the pricing explanation, the competitive edge. And by doing so, this is describing who you will be marketing your products to. A short description of who you think will buy your products and why. It could be include your company's location and what you anticipate to moving in the future. It could be expanding. You know, I have a coffee shop in Miami Beach. I want to expand it to Coral Gables, then to Doral. Or I, I intend to stay in one location and, and grow um, buying the other units to expand it to have a coffee shop and a little restaurant on the side. Whatever, whatever you want to um, provide, this is what you'll be marketing your products, the services, um, at the same time, the, the customer profile and segmentation. So right here, you'll be able to talk about the industry, what industry you're in, what is your industry? Is it growing? Is it declining? What is, what is going on? What is the nature, the state of the industry you're in? Along with what changes do you foresee? How does your company plan to take advantage of these changes? Or even pivot to new markets? Does your company compare to, um, does your company compare to competitors in your industry? Are you within the same playing field? Are you ahead below of what the competitors are in that area? And then followed by the management structure. In the management structure, describe the, the processes that support what your company does as such, how is your company management organized? Who makes the decision? What are the values that the company drives? You know, what values that drive the company? How many employees do you have? What they do? How, how are they paid? Is it bi-weekly? Is it weekly? Is it, you know, monthly? What, how, and, and what roles and responsibilities? It could be 1099s. Do you anticipate this changing based on the market, based on the industry? And then at the same time, with the overall, with the management structure and the organizational structure, is describe the leadership of the company as a nice organizational chart, if you have one. Who are the principal members of the company? What are their roles? If it's a CEO, CIO, CTO, um same time the the financial any financial institutions that you work with or any uh, board of directors outside advisors like account accountants and attorneys list them here and describe their relationship and what are the core competencies of the business along with the legal structures you are able to go over based on the requirements your business faces as such license permits your company operates with or needs. For example, if you're in the food industry, do you have the food and, and, and safety certifications? Or in the makeup and beauty industry, hospitality, 
what type of uh, what type of certifications, licenses you need um, to be fully operational. Also, highlight some of those achievements as well. Like I know, um, I saw some of you um, here. You have a women-owned certification business. That's a good achievement to highlight to do business with an, an agency, state, local, federal, or you are you became a vendor for the, for FIU. For any of those special operating achievements, that makes you stand out. And like I said, we have consultants that can guide you through the certification process for you to obtain the necessary permits, license, certifications that is needed for your business. Also, what is the the legal form um, the legal um, business entity of your business that is operating? What's the business model? Is it a partnership, corporation, um, a sole proprietor? So, what is the overall business entity of the business? By talking about your market, it's the key foundation of marketing based on the research. You know how they say in real estate, it's about location, location, location. So this is all about research. To conduct the market research, you must gather facts and opinions in an orderly and objective way about your target, about the industry, potential customers, but also the existing customers and that market share if you would like to jump into that market. What they like, don't like. The good, the bad, the ugly. Give it to me so I can know what's going on in that pocket. Once you have identified the market research, then you're able to classify your targeted groups of customers in the grouping format and put them as the primaries and secondary market segments. This is um, by doing so, you're able to categorize them and put them in those segments that behave the same manner or have those similar needs. Each business segment is somewhat similar in their needs and attitudes, but they will likely respond similarly with a specific marketing strategy. So by doing so, you're able to kill two birds with one stone and, and have those consumer behaviors, the psychology as to why they're buying and understand additional characteristics that they might have to offer. And then in, along with the industry, describe the industry that you operate in, as well as the potential or perspective of business within that industry. If it's growing, if it's decreasing, is it always moving? For example, technology. Technology has evolved from 10 to 20, even from two years. Um, and now what's, what's the latest with technology, with AI coming into effect? So if you're in the technology, how does that um, impact you? For the, for the good or the bad, or it could be an advantage, who knows? So by knowing, by having that industry knowledge, we'll have a clear illustration in the plan based on what you plan to do in your business plan. And here's some questions you could definitely enhance and, and portray in your, in your business plan as such, what is, the, what is your industry? What, uh, what is your industry's current size? What share of the market you will have? If it's just one pocket of the market share, if it's the whole market, um, identify those characteristics. You should also determine the size of the potential market. So for example, I want to open up a daycare. That's fantastic. There's always a daycare in demand, but I want to focus, I want to have my daycare in the city of Doral. That's fantastic. But how many daycares are within Doral area? If there's two, okay, perfect. Let me see if I could corner just within a quarter mile radius. Or, you know, if, if right there you're able to um, have understand uh, a clear understanding of where your competitors in the industry and who will be your direct competitors. So right there you're able to do a self-assessment in terms of what works and what doesn't work for them and how you could satisfy those needs as well. It could be, um, extending uh, extension of hours before care or after care whatever it could you know be innovative and, and and have the ingenuity of of sending out within your marketing efforts along with any regulations that apply in the industry or the trends in the growth the consumer preferences the product development how and where does your company fit in the industry 
what advantages or disadvantages do you have over your competitors? And what are the additional barriers of entering this market? It could be an example right now. I want to start selling beepers. There's some barriers of entry, like that market window is closed and that market share is really small. So, because everything is done through the phone or through or through, through the iWatch. Perfect. Ila, I have a great, a great point on the next slides in terms of how do you find the competition if a business is online? Perfect. Based on, yeah, so, so your goal is to find what people want to buy, not just what you want to sell them. So identify those target markets, profile your customers, also utilizing those free databases as such the U.S. Census Bureau, the Federal Reserve, um, the Department of Labor. At the same time, it could be based on the different services that people have within the area. It could be, you know, like through Eventbrite, you know, like seeing what people are doing. Like, for example, like if it's a business coach or online businesses, okay, like what, what type of businesses coaches provide or e-commerce here in Miami? What part of the city and see what they do, don't do, and how you're able to have a value proposition. At the same time, it's what other services they're providing and not providing. And if they're not providing something, that right there could be an opportunity for you to enhance that market share or that added value. And then by determining the needs of your of your business, will satisfy, answer these questions in, in your plan for the consumers. Who are your current prospective customers? What they do, you know, what do they buy? And why can they, will they buy your product? What price would it pay? If it's going to be too high, they will buy, will they pay for it? Or, or if it's too low based on the brand perception, what might your customers, why might your customers prefer your product over the alternatives? So by fully understanding your customers, you're able to have that sweet spot of the ideal clients that you would like to offer. And this is the enhancement of your customers is what additional market segments or groups are more likely more likely to buy your products. So once you already solidify that market share, what more? Start pushing the envelope a little bit more. A perfect example. My brother's having a kid, first kid in the family. I don't know nothing about baby clothes, none of that stuff. So now I'm starting to understand everything of the buying baby clothes and so forth. So now I'm in the second market in terms of married couples with no kids, but I want to be the Funko. I want to be the, the cool uncle. So I'm buying everything for my for my niece. So now I'm I'm on a secondary market. So my brother's a primary market. I'm the secondary market. Um, so I could spoil the heck out of her. So this is these cost, you know. These businesses that own baby clothes, baby stores, now already have me as a customer. So, so by fully understanding their, you know, the concern behavior, you're able to succeed um, on the threshold. This is a really good example. Um, when I was doing my MBA with um, here at FIU, I had to pick, I had to pick a company, and and I chose Seven Eleven. By fully understanding the consumers, and um, of how 7-Eleven has been successful. The founder of 7-Eleven wants to give the customers what they want, when, and where they want it. So by fully understanding their, their customers, look at the United States. In the United States, 7-Eleven is a place to grab snacks, drinks, everyday products on the go. But let's look at Indonesia. It's a trending hotspot where young people spend time, surf the web, meet friends. It's apples to oranges based on our perception of 7-Eleven. But in 7-Eleven, that is the go-to spot. So by giving the customers what they want, when and where they want it, that is how you're able to be successful by laying in, by laying this that vision that you want in your business plan. By having those products and services, your audience will have a clear understanding why you are in business, what you sell, and how you're competing. And by providing those services or products, you're able to, once I said, your value proposition, what is what is unique about you? 
What are the important features? What will, what will it do for the customer? How does it benefit them? And why is it better for a customer when compared to the competition? So by your satisfying those wants and needs of your clients or customers, you're able to you're able to increase the market share, have a good customer experience. That's definitely benefiting them to repeat repeat clients for your business. So the pricing structure, what is it? Is it a monthly base? Is it a annual base? Is it a one-time fee? What is the pricing structure? So once again, what gives you a competitive advantage or disadvantage? Do you keep inventory? What kind of what kind of inventory? How much? What's the inventory turnover? By having these clear-cut answers, you're able to have a, a good foundation and understanding of your prices, your structures. Because if you don't have, if you have a quick inventory turnover, that's fantastic. But if it takes you a while to sell this pen, it's gonna it's gonna delay um, your your finances. Along with where your suppliers, what life cycle in your product or service you're in, what research development activities are you performing or planning to do, any intellectual rights do you have for your product or service? So by having all these information in your business plan, definitely will will captivate the end user who's reading your business plan on the product or service um, side. With the marketing and sales strategy, it includes what, what is your plan to grow your company? How will you communicate with your customers? How will you sell your product or customers or services? I'm sorry. Is it based on doing speaking engagements? Is it having a nice email blog or email campaigns? Or how will you sell your product or service? So by having that engagement is an effective tool for marketing and sales. For example, in you know, a good way to obtain clients is being ahead is like a seasonal promotion. Like here's the top three things that you need to focus during the seasonal allergies. You know, drink a lot of water, um, take some allergy medicine ahead of the game so you'll be immune to it. Or, you know, or, or you know, or just avoid going outside. You know, I'm just joking. But, you know, having those strategies definitely have that communication to provide something of value for your clients. And, you know, come, you know, attend one of my webinars or my presentations, and I'll be able to help you to to sell you my products um, so you could have fun without experiencing any seasonal allergies. So with the marketing, it's the effective strategies and activities that result in making your products available that satisfy, once again, your customers while making profit for the company that offers those products. In this case, it's you. You're making profit. It could be selling sponsorship ads. It could be affiliate marketing based on offering some services. Um, assess, um, assess how successful you are at meeting your customer needs, as well as how successful your competitors are. A good marketing strategy will be based on your market research to determine what customers want and what they will pay for, and also helps you to identify potential new markets that you could successfully target. So having an effective strategy it's, is a really um, enhancing tool for your toolbox. And like I said, we have consultants that can guide you through the process. It could be traditional or not traditional route. And the commonly used four P's in marketing, which is the place, price, promotion, and product. Having these, um, these four P's in marketing um, um, will elevate your business, but at the same time, have a clear cut strategy to attain the goals that you have set in place. In addition with the sales strategy, after as a result of the four Ps, this will definitely prepare you the month by month projection based on historical sales, industry market research. It could be school uniforms for kids. It's gonna pretty much the projections, they're gonna be really high during the summertime and the last week of, of when school is starting, as opposed on a slow 
October day. So by having the full sale strategy, you're able to bombard it with special coupons or, or, or anything along those sorts. So you're able to fully understand your historical sales, industry, or market research. Be realistic, be authentic. Do not just pull numbers out of thin air because at the end of the day, this is how your sales will lead for the company growth. But at the same time, the readers are gonna be reading it because at the end of the day, you're gonna be asking for the funders and the funders will be able to see if it if this is real or, or it's unattainable and numbers just don't match up because they're just being pulled out of thin air. Identify the exact amount of funding that you're requesting to start the business, investing the business or growing your business that is tied specifically to your financial projections. So if you're seeking uh, funding for your business, include these funding requirements in your business plan, have a current to a future of five years of funding requirements, include the time of period that each cycle will cover, what type of funds you would like to have, if it's equity, if it's debt, and how do you intend to use these funds after you receive them? Is it capital expenditures, working capital, debt retirement acquisitions, or any strategic financial plans as such, a buyout, I'm being acquired. I want to sell my business. I want to purchase a business. So, or I want to purchase new machineries. Whatever is the end goal of the, uh, of the funding, you have to have a clear financial plan in place. With, by having everything in place in the financial side, it will yield to these projections that explain the overall revenue forecast. So what's next? Perfect. You got a million dollars in um, a million dollar loan. Okay. What are you going to do with it? That's going to explain your revenue forecast based on the infusion that you just acquired, how much money you have needed, how and when the business expects to make profit. Also details what your marketing operational processes and plans will cost you along having the three key financial statements, the balance sheet, the cash flow projections and the profit and loss projections. This will have a clear cut financial analysis in terms of your um, breaking even, making money, where are the leaky holes of the boat so we could make sure we are able to plug it and, and make that money back in the next cycle or the next quarter um, so you could be successful. The good thing is um, here are some links from the SBA that could definitely um, provide you some templates so you could definitely um, plug and play in the balance sheet. In this case, um, the balance sheet is reporting the company's assets, any liabilities, any shareholders' equity. With the cash flow projections is the coming and going of the money that is going through the business over a given period of time. It could be monthly. It could be on a quarterly basis. It could be a semi-annual. It could be a yearly basis. This enables you to meet your existing financial obligations as well as plans for the future. In, in, other, in other words, if I am barely breaking even and I need additional funds, that shows I will have the, the full capacity to repay back that loan and to continue to grow. And I'll be pretty much always on the red. By having a strong cash flow projections right there, it's able to take you to the next step to fulfill the obligations as well as to continue to grow and having that safety net as a as an emergency fund as well. Then with the profit and losses, it's the overall company's revenue minus the expenses in running the business. It could be the fixed assets as such, a salary, the mortgage, um, while well, the variable, it could be any commissions, it could be the um the electricity, it could be um anything on those sorts that you're able to see how much your money is your company is obtaining and where it's going from and how it's being used. And the breaking analysis, as I stated, it shows the sales threshold that needs to be suppressed before the business becomes profitable. Where is that point in the chart of how many sales you need to make that you're able to fully become profitable? If if I spent $10 buying these pens 
and I'm selling them for $2. So therefore, after my fifth pen, I already broke even. So pen number six onward, I made money. So by having a, a clear cut break even assets, you're able to know how much you need to sell on a weekly base, quarterly base, monthly basis. Um, so you're going to be on the plus side at each month or at the each um, period that you would like to set forth. And then this is a really good um, optional. I like to, you know, I'm Hispanic, so I like to put a lot of seasoning and make it pizzazz it. Um, this is a good opportunity for you to add color, add flavor and depth to your plan. Any advertising materials that you have, any blueprints, any potential contracts that you have obtained, um, any press coverage, marketing studies, anything that will support what you claim in your business plan, this is where you're able to have the lasting impression. Also, if any of you are interested to go and venture towards the government contracting sector, not only with a business plan, but a capability statement, what are you capable of fulfilling? Do you have the capacity? What type of certifications? What is your NACE codes? This is a good appendix to have as your back pocket. We have consultants that can guide you through the capability statement um, and also to search and find and win federal contracts, also state and local as well. We also have a webinar and a workshop on those days. So I'm able to be um, providing those workshops to you as well. So by having these appendices will definitely enhance the conversation. Even though the business plan will be will, will be strong with the with the other pockets, but these appendices will definitely enhance that um, the, the reader's mind and the aha moment as well. So the executive summary, even though it's the first section, but it's also the last section you were right. So because you want to save the best for last. Because you're going to be engaging while giving a solid evidence that your business will succeed. So by having the executive summary, it's a short descriptive summaries of your plan, of your business, I'm sorry, of your company, the products and services that you sell or plan to sell, the mission statement, management or organizational structure, target market, and the customer, competition, the future of your business or industry, any banking relationships, information regarding to current investors, any financial data, and projections. So all of this will be the executive summaries. Think of it like a small one-pager. And then on the previous um, points, that's when you'll be able to elaborate a lot more. Okay? So essentially, the executive summary will be answering these questions. What products and services your business will provide? How does it fill a customer need? What is the competitive advantage, if any, does your company have? Who are your target customers? What goals do you have for your company? And how much do you need from a loan, from an investor? How would you use it? So here is pretty much the key takeaway is by developing a business plan, see if it works. If it doesn't, if it works, perfect. The end goal is to make money or generate uh, or get capital or anything on those sorts. If it works, perfect. If it doesn't, don't get discouraged. Let's go back to the drawing board and see what works and what doesn't work. Perhaps it's not the right market. Perhaps it will be five years or perhaps two years from now. But let's revisit. Let's continue throwing spaghetti to the wall but let's analyze what kind of spaghetti actually does stick to the wall. So by doing so, that is the key takeaway of today's presentation. It's not what kind of spaghetti, but make sure that you have an effective business plan to solidify the vision and vision that you have that you want to set forth. Like I said, you're not alone. You have the Florida SPDC at FIU along with the Miami-Dade Business Navigator Program to assist you at no cost if it's the end goal of getting capital. HR, enhancing your marketing needs. You know, I'm a phone call. I'm an email way to assist you um, with any with any way I can within my capacity. I'm more than happy to do so. All right. So um, if you have any questions, you know, by all means, so I um, encourage you to put them in the Q&A and um, right there, I'll be able to answer on your behalf.
um yes um i strive to do it within within three business days but it, um, in terms of sharing the um the, the presentation but once i get the video file um that usually is what delays the process of me getting the video file so that in turn i could email everyone so i would my if it's me i'll definitely do it within within three days but expect within the week and thank you barbara and then um, i'm also going to put some information on the chat of some upcoming events that we have On Monday, no, I do apologize. Tomorrow, March 1st, we have a webinar in terms of uh, boosting your business through circles of influence. Um, right here is the link, so you could definitely um, go ahead and register. But at the same time, um, you know, we talked about a lot of marketing. And one of my colleagues, uh, Emily De Armas, uh, she is doing a webinar in terms of what you need to have in your business website. On March 16th, and uh, right here is the link as well to attend. But then at the same time, um, on the 24th of March, we're having a navigator resource fair from 10 to 1. So I strongly encourage you to participate and register. So that is a good opportunity for you to meet with our business navigators and also community partners um, and how we can all help you out. Because like I said, we're family. So anything that we could do to be of assistance, we're an email and event away um, to, to help you out based on whatever vision that you have for your business or accomplish any goals that you want to set forth for 23. So um, like I said, I will be able to email you the presentation once I receive the video file. Um, strongly encourage you to like and subscribe our YouTube channel. Um, so you could definitely um, see other webinars that we have to offer. But then at the same time, if you're interested to meet with any of our business navigators, um, strongly encourage you to register here in the link below. And uh, I'll be able to connect you with the appropriate consultants or organizations to, um, to help you out as well. So does anyone else have any questions? Okay. And then um, in the chat, I'm putting my email address. So, so in, if anything that you need, you know, just, you know, like I said, shoot me an email, I'm more than happy to help you out. But once again, thank you all for attending today's webinar. Yes, perfect. I'll be looking forward to um, hearing from you, Claudia. And, uh, but yeah, like I said, thank you all for attending today's webinar. Have a good afternoon. And, uh, and hopefully I'll see you at the next uh, event. Thank you and have a good day. Take care.